The sound of the haka greeted the 200 delegates who filed into the Life Convention Centre in Mangere on Monday morning for the New Zealand Forum on the Family. The guests representing 70 different family organisations turned out to hear New Zealand's political leaders outline their family policies. The annual event was organised by Family First Director Bob McCoskery. This year being an election year, we said, OK, let's find out what the political parties who want our vote are saying about family policies. I, I think uh, today will probably be one of the few times where it's not just grandstanding about tax cuts and global warming, it's actually where we get down to the nitty gritty of what are the parties saying about issues important to families. Why do you think it's important to come to events like this? I think it's a great opportunity to come and present our ideas if we're the next New Zealand government and also to hear about their concerns and try and answer their questions. So it's an exchange of views, if you like. I think family forms are particularly good because uh, families are the cornerstone of a society, you always have been, always will be. Because families are one of the most important institutions that are in crisis in New Zealand at this time. You're having to listen pretty hard to actually catch specific policies on some of the areas that we want to know about, uh, like for example pro-life issues, like uh, marriage, like actually dealing with actual causes of child abuse, family breakdown, divorce. Poverty and the smacking issue and family violence have really been key issues this morning. Is it, does that surprise you? No, I guess when you gather together a whole lot of uh, pro-family groups you get a couple of key issues that families have been thinking about recently. But I, I think, you know, the aim of the day is to get a wide cross-section of policies. And the smacking issue certainly drew a wide range of answers from the politicians. The way that referendum is worded, in my view, is um, very slanted and is designed to get a majority for the referendum. If I can see compelling evidence that this legislation is not working and I am Prime Minister of New Zealand, then I will work to change it. To this point, at this date, I haven't seen such evidence. What I hate about that anti-smacking legislation is this, is that it made me a criminal. People were absolutely screaming about the possibility that they can't smack their child in their mind. That's how important it was that they be allowed to smack their child. I thought it would be more important to stop murders and to um, create a society that's positive and happy with each other. So the family party strongly wants to reinstate Section 59 of the Crimes Act to protect their parents. But it wasn't only politicians who had the opportunity to take the stage. Nikki and Andy Bray spoke to the delegates about real family life. What would you say are the key issues that really face New Zealand families at this time? Well, personally, I just see the youth crime rate just escalating because of broken families. And if we don't address these broken families and the cause of the broken families, then we'll have an escalating crime rate that's going to get out of control. And then Abraham Lincoln <coughs> said, a, said a great quote that it's quoted many times, but it's fantastic. And it says that the state of a nation lies in the homes of its people. Mm. and um, we don't have strong homes in New Zealand. Marriage is not something that's set on a pedestal and it's not, there's not a lot of input put into building strong marriages, therefore th there's not strong families in that sense. And so there's a, there's a lot of key components that need to be worked on. Noticeably absent from the lineup of speakers was Prime Minister Helen Clark. When we confirmed John Key, we went back and said, John Key's coming, we think we ne you need to be there. When we confirmed 70 organisations, we went back and saying, hey, there's a wide cross-section of organisations here, we think you need to be here. Each time it was just a blanket no. Uh, we made it a policy that we would only accept leaders because all the parties said, oh, look, we'll just send you our family spokesperson, we'll just send you, you know, one of our MPs. And we said, no, this is an important election year. I think if organisations are taking time out to take a day off to be here, you need to send your leader. So Winston Peters was meant to appear today. Why is it that he hasn't turned up? That was a very late decision Friday afternoon and I think people could probably say, yeah, he's probably got a lot of bigger issues on his mind. But I think it's, a, it's, a, it's sad actually because when you look at Winston's voting record, he's actually got one of the most family friendly voting records in the House. Uh, and so I'm disappointed that he wasn't able to turn up. The political leaders took the opportunity to outline their stands on all sorts of family-related issues. All expressed concern for the violence that exists in so many New Zealand households, but also spoke of a hope that family would flourish in New Zealand once again. Māori orators sometimes use the phrase kāritiki te kōpara e kō nei teata, like the bellbird singing in the morning. It is a statement of hope 
that our families can be strong once more, that our communities are safe and thriving, and that everything is right within our world. The challenge before us all is what can we do to hear the bellbirds sing? Todd Simmons ends on tonight.